I remember the day that I was diagnosed with stage 1C ovarian cancer. It was one of the worst days of my life for multiple reasons. I was in my last semester of college. I was hundreds of miles away from my core set of friends and family. And I was confused as to how the hell I even got cancer in the first place. You'd think that these things would be my most pressing worries. They were not. Most women would be concerned about the fact that they have a disease that could potentially kill them. I was more concerned about the hair that I knew I was about to lose. I love my hair, obviously so. <laughs> I'm actually obsessed about it. Not so obsessed that I wouldn't cut it into a fresh new style because it always grows back and fast. And I was, but I was obsessed enough to know that I wouldn't have a fresh cut this time. I'd be completely bald. What real woman wants to walk around like that? I didn't, but I had to learn to. I had my head completely shaved about three weeks after I started chemo. Not being completely comfortable with my new hairstyle, I made a call to my stepfather and asked him to send me some money to purchase a wig. Within three days, I had a check for $40 and was at the nearest costume shop looking at what I figured to be what was the cutest wig to fit my face. I found one, but even in finding it, trying it on, and wearing it for a couple of days, I started to feel, well, kind of phony. Anyone that knew me knew that I had grown out of wearing straight hair at the age of 19. So to stand here now at age 22 with a bone straight wig on made me feel like I was putting on the biggest front of the planet. That wig rubbed my spirit in the wrong way every time I put it on my head. I looked in the mirror and saw everything but me. That wig wasn't just causing, the wig wasn't just causing my spirit discomfort. It was also interfering with the temperature of my body, which at this point had started into full swing hot flashes caused by the removal of my left ovary and over, left ovary and fallopian tube. I could be at the mall with that damn wig on. And once the hot flashes kicked in, the wig became the main source of the heat on my body. I went to a step show with that wig on and swore on the Bible and the Quran that everyone who was staring at me was doing so because they knew I didn't have no damn hair and the wig I had on was definitely not mine. <laughs> the last time that wig saw my scalp was at Chili's while I was with my really good friends. We were just sitting there, chilling, eating, catching up, and when all of a sudden I felt this tremendous flash of heat envelope my body. Keep in mind I was sitting directly under an air duct that was pumping out cold air because of the steadily rising heat outside. And we're in Nashville, consider how bad the heat is in about April. But all this meant absolutely nothing. That vent was blowing cold air directly on the back of my neck, and those flashes were still slapping me in the face. Every five minutes or so, I would stop in mid-conversation and say, y'all, I'm really, really hot. After suffering through this for about 30 minutes, my hand moved to my head before my mind had real time to comprehend what I was about to do. Considering your laughter, I think you all know what I did next. <laughs> In one fluid motion, I reached up, politely snatched that damn wig off my head, placed it on the corner of the chair located next to me, looked at my friend dead in the face and said, hey, y'all, don't let me forget that. <laughs> Both they and the table of 10 located a few tables behind us sat there frozen about for about 10 seconds. At about 11 seconds and some change, one of my friends burst into laughter while the other one stood there still in shock. I looked at them both and said, what, shit, I'm hot. <laughs> they continued to laugh, we continued to eat and talk, and we went back to campus, wig and toe, to talk and laugh about it all again. I don't really know what motivated me to snatch that wig off past the fact that it was just too damn hot up under all that hair. I think it was just me trying to shed myself of the one thing that was making me uncomfortable about having cancer. In my twisted little mind, I felt like wearing a wig was being phony 
and phoning is something I was not, not even on accident. As a woman, I understand and know all too well how one's outward appearance correlates with one's inner feelings about themselves. Unfortunately for me, I had to learn how to be that confident without the head full of hair that I had been born with, and that was hard. I didn't necessarily like the fact that I had to walk around bald for God knows how long. What would people think about me? What would they say about me? Would my boyfriend leave me because I, he was no longer attracted to me or I was no longer attractive to him? Would people think I was still pretty? Hell, would I think I was still pretty? But I surely didn't like the idea of being uncomfortable in my own skin either. Being bald usually comes with having cancer. That is what it was, and I knew there was nothing I could do about it. What I could do was try and be as comfortable as possible, and I was everything but that with that damn wig on my scalp. Ultimately, pre and post diagnosis, I had to learn to just live my life according to my normal. And post diagnosis, my normal, my second act, was to start telling my story to whomever would get something out of it. I couldn't just hold on to my story knowing that I could, um, I, it could be a shared story among many thousands of women across the world. That need for me to tell my story led to opportunities for me to lecture with the Chicago chapters of both Gilda's Club and the National Ovarian Cancer Coalition, respectively. Not only am I able to tell my story to fellow survivors, but I am able to speak to future gynecological oncologists, it took me forever to learn how to pronounce that, <laughs> about how my story, <laughs> about my story, in hopes that they will know how to handle their cancer patients throughout their careers. I also wrote and published a book in, entitled Coming to My Crossroads. I needed to get my own personal story out to the masses and I'm currently in the process of republishing the book in order to reach more women like me. My snatching my wig off in the full view of the public wouldn't be considered normal or kosher to the masses, but who gives a damn? I sure don't. These are the same people who would live a lie by walking around with a head full of hair that is not theirs and a church fan sweating from every part of their body and fanning the heat swelling from their skin because they're just too scared to be themselves. I will never live my life like that and neither should anyone else. Do what you need to do to make you happy, to live to your fullest potential, to be your normal and to embrace your second act.